Miranda was a woman with a difficult character. She was arrogant, domineering, and demanding. It had always been the case in her life that she wanted to be better and superior to everyone else. She was a native of the capital with her own apartment, and Miranda considered this fact sufficient for her pride. By the age of 55, Miranda had not achieved any significant career heights, but she was still the chief accountant at the market. After being laid off, she decided not to work anymore and immediately retired. Miranda's husband was a gentle and accommodating man. He loved his wife very much and obeyed her in everything, despite her terrible character. But it happened that Charles's life was abruptly cut short. He suffered a heart attack. Miranda was left alone with her beloved son, and she focused all her attention on him. He was her hope, her support, and a reason for pride. She had high expectations of her son since he was her continuation and had to meet her standards to keep up the brand. When her son introduced Miranda to his future wife, she was shocked by his choice. At first, everything went well. The young couple came to visit with flowers and a cake and sat down at the table. But as soon as Miranda found out that her son's fiancé was from a village, she couldn't contain her irritation. Sweetheart, don't you think a primitive girl from the village is not worthy of my son? You probably want to charm him and get an apartment for yourself, so to speak, to set yourself up nicely in life. Julia was shocked by what she heard. Andrew had warned her that his mother had a difficult and irritable character, but she didn't expect it to be this bad. After chewing a piece of cake, Julia replied, Yes, I am from a village but I have achieved everything myself. I went to study in the district center, and then I got into this institute on a budget in the design and technology faculty. I graduated with honors and now work as a designer at a publishing house that produces children's books. I really like my job. I'm saving money for an illustration course, and I plan to learn that as well. I have never looked for suitors, and I don't claim any apartments. Miranda looked at her as if she were nothing and turned to her son, saying, Son, couldn't you find someone better? You are my hope and support. You are intelligent and have a higher technical education. And she is a commoner, unattractive, and not very smart. Don't disgrace the family. Find someone more worthy. But her son replied, Mom, I love only Julia, and this is my choice whether you like it or not. I proposed to her, and we will be getting married soon. Miranda shrieked that this could not be and dramatically clutched her heart. Julia understood that she was not welcome here, silently stood up from the table, and began to gather her things to leave. Miranda started complaining again about how her blood pressure had suddenly spiked due to her son's antics. But Andrew did not rush to save his mother, as usual. Instead, he prepared to leave with his fiancée. Andrew and Julia left quickly. Miranda held a grudge against Julia forever for daring to take her son. Several years passed since that unfortunate meeting. Miranda didn't attend their wedding and didn't communicate with them for six months. But later... She realized that her son was determined to stay with his wife and she needed to establish a relationship with Julia. Otherwise, she risked losing her son altogether. In conversations with her son, Miranda criticized Julia in every possible way and even the birth of her granddaughter didn't change her attitude towards her daughter-in-law. However, after the granddaughter was born, she slightly changed her tactics and began to visit them often. One day, in the kitchen, a conversation took place between the mother-in-law and the daughter-in-law. Julia, in our time, a non-drinking man is a valuable commodity. It's easy for him to find a wife or a girlfriend. There's always demand. But a woman with someone else's child is of no interest to anyone. Nobody wants to take on the extra baggage, Miranda remarked dismissively. 
Julia had become accustomed to her mother-in-law's attacks and, without batting an eye, replied with surprise, Why are you so worried about me? Miranda merely scoffed, What do you mean? I'm just talking and sharing my thoughts. Think about it. You are not a beauty and not particularly smart. As long as I've known you, you've only cared about your career. And what's the point? There's no money. You can't make ends meet. Your profession is ridiculous. You should be taking care of your husband. There's nothing to eat at home. What are you making? Some kind of lasagna. You'd be better off making some soup and frying cutlets, both tasty and they would last longer. Besides, the apartment isn't clean. When Andrew comes home from work, he needs comfort and a tidy home, with food prepared. And what kind of housewife are you? He might find himself a better option. Julia wasn't the perfect housekeeper and did think a lot about her career, but everything was fine between her and Andrew, and somehow they managed their lives and household without her mother-in-law's advice. Hi, Mom, are you grumbling again? Andrew walked into the kitchen. Miranda jumped up. No, son, I'm not grumbling. I'm advising the young housewife on how to manage the household, that's all. Julia chose not to respond. She was a non-confrontational woman and knew she couldn't change her mother-in-law. In life, Julia preferred not to prove anything to anyone. She just pursued her goals and lived her own life. Miranda had long realized how to use her son's family for her own interests. Now she often visited to enjoy good food and additionally asked her son for money. She spent her pension and savings without a second thought. Miranda believed that her son was obliged to help his mother since she was the only one he had. No one else was closer. The fact that her son had his own family didn't bother her at all. They're living well. They can save money and help their mother. Miranda was convinced that she was the main woman in her son's life, not his daughter-in-law. Julia should know her place. Julia and Andrew genuinely loved each other and lived well. There was always respect and mutual understanding between them. When their daughter was born, their family became even stronger. The only person who remained out of the game was Miranda, but this hardly concerned Julia. Even before their daughter was born, Julia had quit her beloved job and moved to a more demanding but better paying one. She had always wanted to live in the city and buy her own apartment, a plan she had since her student years. Julia didn't study design just for fun. She intended to use this profession to earn money. Even before the wedding, she bought a small one-bedroom apartment on the outskirts of the city with a mortgage. Julia believed it was better to pay the bank for her own apartment than to rent from someone else. This very apartment was where the young family lived. Even while on maternity leave with little Stella, Julia continued to work. She became a vector graphics illustrator and took projects home, completing them while the baby slept. She did everything she could to pay off the loan quickly. Only after returning from maternity leave to her main job did Julia finally pay off the debt. Andrew thought differently. He was not as driven. He had worked for more than five years at the same company, where his salary hadn't changed much, but he hoped that one day he would get a promotion while staying in his familiar position. For the family, Julia was the primary breadwinner, and she was growing more and more tired. From time to time, she started the same conversation with Andrew. Sweetheart, don't you think it's time to find another job? I'm tired of carrying everything on my shoulders. With your profession, you could easily find a place with a decent salary. To which Andrew invariably replied, No, just six more months, a year, and I'll become the head of the supply department. This is important for me. It's my career. Don't you understand? Julia gently but persistently countered, Darling, you said the same thing a year ago but nothing has changed. It's time for you to earn too. 
We have a daughter growing up, and there will be so much to need. When she gets older, she'll need her own room. We need to think about expanding our space. But Andrew suddenly flared up. You only think about money. Mom is right. You're a mercenary. Julia couldn't take it anymore and replied in a raised voice. Your mom again. Don't you have any thoughts of your own? Can't you see that I'm carrying everything on my shoulders? If I hadn't left my beloved job back then and continued to learn something new, would I have been able to buy this apartment? I could have just sat in one place and waited for a promotion. Andrew, even angrier, continued, You don't understand my goals and only think about money. I love my job and I'll get a promotion soon. You don't believe in me or support me. Mom saw right through you from the very first minute. You only married me for the apartment. Finishing his speech, Andrew didn't wait for a response. He demonstratively walked out of the room and slammed the door. Julia nearly burst into tears. They had never fought like this before. It seemed that her mother-in-law had been planting ideas in Andrew's head for a long time, turning him against his wife. The idea that provincial Julia was marrying out of calculation for an apartment sank deeper into Miranda's mind. Even the fact that Julia had bought her own place didn't matter to her. At every meeting, the mother-in-law tried to belittle Julia. She would scold her about the household. What kind of housewife are you? There are unwashed dishes in the sink and there's dust on the shelves. You cook some incomprehensible food. What does that even look like? Miranda would say. She would also bring up where Julia was from. You newcomers have flooded the capital. Hunters for a better life. You're just waiting to snag an apartment and become part of the intelligentsia. You should have stayed in your village, milking cows instead. Additionally, she never forgot to mention her son. My son is the best, hardworking, doesn't drink, doesn't smoke, helps his mother with money. And he should help. I raised him alone. I sent him to university, hired tutors, and didn't sleep at night. Before he got married, he was always well-fed and dressed nicely, but now he's become so independent, leaving for his own family. He should think about his old mother. I'll die, and he won't have anyone left. I am the first and main woman in his life. Miranda started visiting them more often, trying to squeeze money out of her son while seizing every opportunity to belittle her daughter-in-law. One day, she visited again, knowing it was Julia's payday. Julia made her tea and served sandwiches with sausage and cheese. The mother-in-law immediately noticed that the sausage and cheese were expensive and of high quality. What's with the expensive cheese and sausage? Have you got money to burn? Or have you suddenly become rich? You should have bought some meat instead, made soup or plov. It would last longer and everyone would be full. But sandwiches? That's not food, just dry stuff. Instead of wasting money on that, you could have cooked food for the week. You got your paycheck today. You could have added a little to your mother's pension. Julia calmly replied. We prefer to eat fresh, so we don't cook for the whole week. Usually, we cook together or when someone has time. I work a lot. I don't have time. But I always make sure there's good sausage, cheese, cottage cheese, and dumplings in the fridge so we can have a quick snack if we're too tired to cook. But Miranda wouldn't let up. It's you who doesn't have the strength. Julia sighed. I'm working on important projects, and I come home late, so I have no energy left. Sometimes I don't even have the strength to have dinner, let alone play with my daughter. The mother-in-law was outraged. And what about my son? Should he sit there hungry, cooking for himself and taking care of the daughter while you tire yourself out at work? You've completely neglected the family. You put your career above the family. 
Or maybe you found someone else at work. I've suspected for a long time that Stella isn't my son's daughter. You've probably been fooling around at work. Julia was shocked and couldn't believe her ears. What are you saying? Who else? Who have I been fooling around with? What nonsense. I'm working for two, and I'm doing everything for the family. Your son doesn't complain. Everything is fine between us. He's happy. But you're constantly dissatisfied, just looking for ways to criticize and pick at me. If you don't like it here, maybe it's time for you to go home. Miranda didn't expect such a bold response from the usually silent Julia and raised her voice. Don't you raise your voice at me, you mutt. How dare you bark at me? I have the right to know how my son is living. You took him away from me, and now you're telling me what to do. Julia didn't want to hear any more. She silently left the kitchen and went to the room. She wasn't going to spend her whole day off arguing with her mother-in-law. She just didn't have the energy for it. Fortunately, Andrew was out playing with their daughter at the playground, and they didn't hear the unpleasant conversation. For the first time, the mother-in-law started to say that the daughter wasn't Andrew's right after she was born, her eyes were different, her nose wasn't right, and so on. This was very upsetting. Andrew had never doubted his wife's fidelity. Throughout their years together, she had never given him any reason for jealousy. Besides, their daughter was a carbon copy of her father. Julia also remembered how the same mother-in-law hinted to her son that his wife was infertile and defective. They had been married for three years, and there were no children. But Andrew and Julia wanted to live for themselves first, save up money, create a cozy home, and prepare for the arrival of a child. No one considered that. Miranda had plenty of reasons to criticize. Julia never wanted to have a quarrel with her. She always tried to maintain at least some kind of relationship so that her husband and mother could communicate normally. She believed that relatives should support each other and find a compromise, as there wouldn't be other relatives. It was necessary to establish contact with those who were available. But no matter how hard Julia tried, the contact wasn't established. Julia always treated her mother-in-law to something tasty, specifically buying her favorite fresh red fish, honey cake, or Norwegian herring. Julia picked out expensive and necessary gifts for holidays and always tried to include some cash with the gift. She also often sent her mother-in-law home with some of her own food, and when she bought that same fish, she would get two so she could treat her mother-in-law later. But Miranda didn't appreciate any of it. She believed that this woman had taken her precious son away. Suddenly, the doorbell rang. It was probably Andrew and their daughter returning from a walk. Julia fell silent and heard what her mother-in-law was saying as she ran out to greet them. Hello, son. I came to visit you and your granddaughter. Andrew replied, Hi, Mom. Where's Julia? Miranda waved her hand dismissively. I don't know where your Julia is. She's probably lying around in her room. Look at you, so good. You took the baby for a walk, and she didn't even prepare any food. There are only sandwiches in the kitchen, and by the way... They're made with expensive sausage. I was thinking, since you have money for expensive food, it wouldn't hurt to help your mother. Andrew, taking off his coat, responded, Mom, I gave you money a week ago, in addition to what I send you monthly. You can cut some cheese and sausage for yourself. Julia won't mind. Miranda was taken aback. She won't mind? She doesn't think much of me, that ungrateful brat. This mutt from the village was taken into a decent family, and today she told me that I was picking on her. Mom, you are picking on her, Andrew countered. Miranda widened her eyes, and you're just like her. Give birth, raise them, don't sleep at night, and then they talk back to their mother. Did she teach you that? 
My feet will never cross this threshold again. Live as you wish if your mother isn't good enough for you. Miranda rushed to the kitchen and a minute later shot out of the apartment like a bullet. Julia came out of the room. She hugged her daughter and husband. Andrew and Juliet exchanged silent glances. They understood everything without words, knowing who had blown the conflict out of proportion. They sighed and went to the kitchen. Julia put the kettle on and was about to cut some sandwiches, but there was no sausage or expensive cheese in the fridge. Miranda hadn't appeared at Julia's apartment for six months. They hadn't called each other or communicated at all. Julia even began to think that it would be better if she didn't exist at all. After all, it was so quiet and peaceful without her. But Miranda regularly called her son. She never missed an opportunity to complain about life, ask for money, and criticize Julia at the same time. During one of those phone calls, Miranda said in a worried voice, Son, don't worry, but I'm calling you with some unpleasant news. Your Julia turned out to be promiscuous. You know, I didn't like her from the first meeting. She's mercenary. But when Brittany was born, I suspected something was off. She's not from you, son. She's not our blood. Mom, what are you talking about? You're at it again. Stop slandering my Julia. Andrew replied sharply. I'm not slandering, Miranda countered. I'm telling the truth. Who else is going to tell you the truth except your own mother? Julia was seen with a man at a restaurant, your neighbor Chloe's daughter. She was celebrating her birthday there, and Julia was eating expensive steaks with that man. Can you imagine? The man looked quite impressive, dressed in a good suit. Looks like she found herself a wealthier replacement. But Andrew remained unruffled. It was a business lunch at the restaurant. And stop slandering my wife. How much longer do I have to put up with this? Can't you accept my choice? I love her. In response, Miranda only huffed discontentedly and hung up the phone. Of course, she couldn't accept her daughter-in-law. No matter what Julia did, she would always be bad in her eyes. Even if she bought ten apartments and showered her with gifts and sausage, her son was the most precious thing in her life. And Miranda would never consider Julia worthy of her son. Miranda disappeared again for a while, but she continued to ask for money regularly. She had no intention of closing this feeding trough for herself. After all, this way, she could save part of her money, go to the theater and museums with her friends, and indulge herself with caviar or red fish. For six months, Miranda hadn't shown up at Julia's house or spoken to her. But then she realized that Julia, unlike before, wasn't giving her gifts with money, wasn't buying food, and she no longer had the opportunity to sneak food out of the fridge. Considering this disadvantageous for herself, Miranda decided to show up at Julia's house again under the pretext of visiting her granddaughter. Although she didn't care about her granddaughter, she never reached out to her, never played with her, and often said that the granddaughter wasn't even Andrew's. Miranda called her son before the weekend and said she missed her granddaughter very much, and it was time for everyone to forget past grievances. After all, they were family. Andrew thought that his mother had reconsidered and really wanted to spend time with her granddaughter, so he invited her over on Saturday. Julia wasn't thrilled about the idea, but there was nothing to be done. After all, Miranda was her husband's biological mother and Stella's grandmother. On the way home, Julia bought a cake from the pastry shop and started waiting for the guest. Brittany was playing in her room with her toys while Andrew was looking at his phone. As soon as the doorbell rang, he went to greet his mother. Miranda was kinder than ever. She even brought Stella some cheap Chinese toy. As soon as she entered, she handed it to the girl and said, Here you go, sweetheart, a little gift from Grandma. I'm so glad to see you. Now go ahead, dear, play with your new toy in your room, 
and I'll talk to your parents for a bit. The girl ran off to her room, and Miranda walked into the kitchen and glanced at Julia. Julia initiated the conversation, Hello, Miranda. Come in, we're having tea with cake. I bought a delicious cake, your favorite, from that pastry shop. Well, I won't refuse the cake, the mother-in-law replied, looking at the cake and surveying the surroundings. Miranda remarked, I see you have new plates and a coffee maker. Julia responded enthusiastically, yes, and we have delicious Italian coffee. Would you like some? Andrew will brew it for both of us right now. Yes, dear, I would like some, the mother-in-law said thoughtfully. Andrew nodded and went to fill the coffee maker with beans and take out cups for the coffee, while Miranda continued, so, what else is new with you? Julia happily replied, I got a promotion at work. And we have some plans for the future, we're saving money. Other than that, everything is the same as before. Miranda looked around the house and felt a pang of jealousy. The house looked better, but it hadn't changed the amount of money her son sent her every month. A nasty grimace crossed her face, and she began to grumble, You're lucky. I'm still living on a penny. It's time to renovate my apartment. The wallpaper is so old. And my bed creaks so much, it's about to break. But first of all, I need a new TV. Son, aren't you ashamed to be living in comfort while your only mother is denying herself everything? Why did your wife get promoted, and I still don't have a new TV? Andrew nearly dropped the cups from his hands and asked in surprise, What TV, Mom? What are you denying yourself? I send you a decent amount of money to help you. You live for your own pleasure. You go to theaters, museums, buy not the cheapest groceries, and meet with your friends. You live better than most retirees in the country. Although at your age, other women are still working and supporting themselves and helping with their grandchildren. Yet you don't really want to see your granddaughter and have never taken her to your place. But if you need a TV, Julia and I can give it to you for your birthday. Forget about everything else. Miranda got angry. I've done my time. Do you know how difficult my job was? I was an accountant. It took a lot of nerves to handle everything. A year felt like three. And, by the way, when I worked, I bought you the best. The best soccer uniform, the best sneakers, a backpack. I've taken care of you my whole life. But apparently, you don't need your mother anymore. Andrew interrupted the rising argument, his face stone-like, and replied, You probably forgot how our last conversation ended. I thought you'd drawn some conclusions and were ready to communicate on new terms. But you're reproaching me again. Aren't you tired of constantly complaining and playing the victim? Why is it never enough for you? Miranda grimaced, How mercenary you've become, son, just like your wife. All you think about is money, and you're so greedy. You're living in comfort while your mother is a burden. We're not living in comfort. Andrew shouted. Even though Julia is earning more in her new position, I've stayed at my old job with my old salary. I'm already giving you a lot. And you could give more. Apparently, this job isn't worthy of you. After all these years, you haven't had a promotion or a new position. Julia seems to know how to spin around her boss to get ahead. That's why she's getting promoted. And you? You're just sitting there, not striving for anything, not even wanting to help your mother. These words deeply hurt Andrew. He reflected, and after a couple of weeks, he quit his job. He decided to go and directly ask his boss for a raise, but the boss said there wouldn't be any raises in the next few years. Then Andrew faced a choice to stay at his beloved job or go to a different, new, and unknown place. He decided it was time to try something new. Andrew wasn't unemployed for long. 
A couple of weeks later, a friend called him and offered a good, high-paying position at his uncle's company, which needed a competent employee. Julia was over the moon with happiness and delighted by her husband's new job. And the mother-in-law achieved all this in just one evening. There's still some benefit from her, Julia noted to herself. Miranda made it a point to emphasize at every opportunity that it was her doing, that she had pushed her son in the right direction, and now, thanks to her, he was so successful. In fact, Andrew had become the main breadwinner of the family. Julia and Andrew were already thinking about where their daughter would go to school in the future. They also planned to buy a two-bedroom apartment. Miranda didn't learn about the new position and the plans to exchange their apartment for a more spacious one right away. And when she did find out, she wasn't happy about it. On the contrary, she got angry. Every month, Andrew sent her the same amount. On Sunday evening, Miranda showed up without calling or warning. She knew they would be home at that time and wanted to create an element of surprise. Another scandal started in the kitchen. Julia, I see you're cooking something strange again. Miranda began. What's that horrible looking dish you have? Julia calmly replied, it's pasta carbonara. Andrew and I tried it at an Italian restaurant, and I decided to make it at home. It'll be ready in ten minutes. Miranda, while criticizing Julia's cooking skills, was always eager to eat. She nodded affirmatively, I want some. And while the housewife is cooking, tell me, son, what's this new job or position you have? I didn't understand over the phone how much you're being paid. Andrew wasn't prepared to discuss the details of his position and salary with his mother. He knew it wouldn't lead to anything good and also understood that she wasn't asking just for the sake of it. Arriving unannounced was also not without reason. So he answered briefly, it's a job like any other. I like it and the salary is better than my old position. Miranda wasn't willing to back down. So, you're getting paid more? Maybe you'll help your single mother a bit more? It wasn't for nothing that I urged you to change your old job. You listened to your mother, and look how well it turned out. A mother wouldn't give bad advice. Andrew sensed that his answer didn't please her, but it was too late. I help enough, he continued. I told you we're planning to buy a new apartment so that Stella can have her own room. All the money is going toward that. But even after that, I won't be helping more, and maybe even less. After all, we want a second child. The mother-in-law was taken aback. Have you lost your mind? Less? You want to leave me to starve? It's all your Julia's doing. I knew she was trouble from the start. She's deliberately turning you against me. Andrew replied loudly and resolutely, stop the hysteria. You have enough for bread, butter, and caviar. Stop pretending to be poor and complaining. I can't listen to this anymore. My wife is wonderful, the best, and she has never said a bad word to you. Julia smiled. It felt good that her husband was defending her against his mother. But Miranda continued her hysterics. You're ungrateful. I've done everything for you in this life. And this is how you treat your mother. You'll remember this. It will be too late. When I'm gone, you'll cry over my grave. Andrew put his head in his hands and calmly said, Nothing changes. You're still the same. I'm tired of this. We'll soon exchange our apartment and live in another neighborhood, far away from you. You can stop coming to visit. Miranda's eyes widened, and she shouted, You're kicking your mother out of the house. Fear God. He sees everything and will punish you all for your sins. On that malicious note, Miranda left the apartment. After that scandal, she didn't show her face to Julia and Andrew for many years. She didn't even come when her grandson was born, 
but she never forgot to remind him about the monthly payments. After that scandal, everything went according to plan for Andrew and Julia. They exchanged their apartment for a more spacious one and moved in. A month after moving, Julia found out she was pregnant. She quit her office job and continued to work part-time from home, creating her illustrations during her free time while caring for the baby. Andrew helped her with the kids and the house as much as he could. They also hired a wonderful nanny who loved both children more than their own grandmother.